From the Sky Satellite Network, this is Sky Sports. face of a man ready to confront the moment of truth. Nigel Benn defends his world title in his first fight since the awesome, brutal and almost fatal battle that left the American Gerald McClellan with brain damage. Five months on, Benn steps into the very same ring here at the Docklands Arena in London in a supreme test of his powers of recovery, both physical and mental. And he views the job with a chilling sense of realism. Every time I step in that ring, I'm ready to put my life on that line. Because that's how much my titles mean to me. I'm not here to lie down. If someone batters me from pillar to post, I will get up. I don't care if I'm injured or whatever. No one is taking my title away from me unless he really, really deserves it. Otherwise, he ain't getting my title. And I'm ready to prepare to put my life on the line. It's with that attitude that Ben goes to work tonight. What can be going through his mind less than an hour away from a contest that will decide the WBC World Super Middleweight title? His opponent tonight, Vincenzo Nardiello of Italy, a two-time former European champion, unorthodox, southpaw style. It's said of him that he's underachieved through his career so far, that his potential has largely been unfulfilled. But what an opportunity for him tonight. It's the biggest fight of his whole career. And Ben is in his typically positive mood. The guy's got to come in with that same kind of attitude as Joe McClendon, and he's got to come with TNT in both hands. And if he ain't got TNT, he's going home. I ain't ready to, I am not ready to give up my title. Like I said, it's free great champions in Great Britain. One in Dublin, one in Wales, and one out of London. <laughs> the voice of the warrior as he returns. A very good evening to you from the Docklands Arena in the East End of London. A night of explosive action looks guaranteed in the ring here, but also a night of extraordinary emotion surrounding this big event as Sky Sports continues to bring you the very finest in world boxing. Tonight, Nigel Benn defending his WBC World Super Middleweight crown for the eighth time against Vincenzo Nardiello. That is our top of the bill. And another major fight here, a most credible world champion, Orlin Norris of the United States, defending his WBA World Cruiserweight crown against Nate Miller, a man who's had to wait a long time for his world title opportunities. It would surely take a very strong man to banish all the demons that must lurk for Nigel Benn around this arena. Barry McGuigan's with us. Great to have you along tonight, Barry. Can Nigel Benn just slot into the mental zone again? I think he can because he's an extraordinary guy. He's a superb champion, probably one of the better champions that we've had uh, for, for maybe in the last century. Incredible fighter. And I think he's got tremendous, tremendous uh, mental capacity for, for a tough fight and for... Uh, conditions that he's not supposed to be able to cope with and I think he can do it tonight and I think he can do it uh, pretty quickly too he's an impressive puncher and this guy will suit him the, the career statistics speak for themselves but one also has to remember with Ben Barry that the bravado and ra the, the generating of atmosphere around Ben's big fights has been special throughout his career so is it not fair to assume that the moment of truth will only come we'll only really know when he gets into the room well nobody will know because he will have uh, the, the demons as you said and it will always be that doubt element of doubt there because of that but I think that he can overcome that because he's got tremendous powers I went through a similar thing and the first fight afterwards was pretty tough to overcome it especially when I had my opponent in trouble I think that Ben will suffer deja vu at some stage because of the surroundings because it's so familiar but I think he can overcome that and he can wear this guy down more from Barry McGuigan as we go tonight I'm delighted to say that there is better news of Gerald McClellan this weekend we hear from free Port, Illinois that he's on his way home from hospital and he carries our continued good wishes but he remains a sick man we should also
also remember that Nigel Benn suffered fearfully in the battering that McClellan gave him, and tonight Benn gives us a wonderful insight into the struggles he's had to recover from that. But rest assured that Benn comes to fight tonight fully physically prepared, after five weeks of torture in Tenerife. Few men in the history of boxing, surely, have explored the limitations of physical punishment in the way Ben has done. Take a look at this. Well, we've all heard of taking the weight on one's shoulders, but how about on your head like that? The enthusiasm clearly still there, but there are sit-ups, and then there are sit-ups. The old timers always say that the preparation and suffering a training camp makes the work on the big night the easier to bear. Our own big fight commentator Ian Dark has followed Ben's progress throughout his career. He's been to Tenerife and we'll see Ian's report later. But Ian, at close quarters, Knowing Ben so well, do you detect any differences? I didn't, frankly. If this was a fighter who was uh, haunted by hidden demons, you could have fooled me. He seemed very made, motivated, on form, both in and out of the ring. The training was superb. And remember one thing about Ben. He's not, uh, and I don't mean it's unkindly, he's not a sensitive soul. This fellow is a street fighter, an ex-soldier, a real fighter Jimmy down to Dennis. the sole of his boots. I think it'll be the same old Ben in here tonight. But uh, Glenn McCrory, I suppose the acid test is when he climbs through those ropes, same arena, same ring, five months on. Yes, I think, certainly Barry mentioned earlier, there is a point where it may cross his mind what happened, but it, it's happened to other fighters, it happened to Barry, Chris Eubanks, Alan Minder, it, it has gone on, and I think you've summed it up, he's a fighter, he has the fighting spirit, and just look at the pictures, does that look like a man who is having any ill effects? He's a, he wants to win, he's totally focused, and I'm sure he's going to be focused tonight. One thing's for certain, Paul, we'll soon find out. Back down to ringside and to Glenn and Ian in just a few minutes' time. Nigel Ben, our main event, and a major fight here as well. About to go to ringside for the WBA World Cruiserweight title. Alden Norris making a fifth defense of his crown against Nate Miller. All-American job, this one. Norris, a former heavyweight who's tangled with just about the very biggest men in the business and is a quality champion. Let's uh, look for a performance from him tonight, and we have a performer as our MC tonight. It's a pleasure to welcome to London Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the first of our world title featured bouts coming your way, the WBA Cruiserweight World Championship, brought to you by Frank Warren's Sports Network and Don King Productions, as sponsored by CityGate Motor Dealerships. At this time, I present the combatants in our semi-main event of the evening. Please welcome now the challenger making his way to the ring. Here is the number nine ranked contender. He is known as Nate, Mr. Miller. Well, this is Nate Miller from Philadelphia, who's been hovering around the fringes of the world cruiserweight title for quite some time now. 31 years of age, he's getting a bit long in the tooth, but this is probably his last chance. He's had a world title fight before when he was beaten by Alfred Cole in Bismarck, North Dakota, a year ago. Comes from Philadelphia where they, uh, they say even the tramps on the street corners have got a pretty decent left jab. Same hometown as the great Joe Frazier. Okay. He used to work for the Housing Authority in Philadelphia and was always a big ticket seller in that town. But somehow he's become something of a nearly man in the cruiserweight division. Is this his night far from home in East London?
championship now coming your way is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. The president is Gilberto Mendoza, supervisor Antonino Brandino, along with the British Boxing Board of Control. Our steward in charge at ringside is Leonard Nipper Reed. Judging at ringside, scoring this bout, we have Angel Tovar, Gusto Vasquez, and Bob Watson. And I introduce to you our referee in charge of this bout, John Coyle. All right, fans, here we go with the WBA Cruiserweight Championship of the World scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. I present to you first the challenger on my left. He is fighting out of the red corner. Patrick the Reed wearing blue trunks with gold trim. He is fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. He weighed in at 13 stone, four and three quarter pounds, or 186 and three quarter U.S. pounds. His professional record stands at 25 wins, four losses, with 21 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Here is the number nine ranked WBA Cruiserweight contender, introducing tonight's challenger, Nate, Mr. Miller. the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corners, the defending world champion. He is wearing solid white trunks, fighting out of San Diego, California in the United States. He weighed in at 13 stone, six and three quarter pounds, or 188 and three quarter U.S. pounds. His outstanding record stands at 43 wins, three losses, one no decision, with 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the fifth defense of his title. Please welcome the WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World, introducing Orlin, the Juice Norman. <laughs> Once again, our referee in charge, now to give instructions, John Coyle. So we're all set to go with the first of two World Championship fights here. Nigel Ben still to come. Check hands. Good luck. Two Americans with a British referee, John Coyle from Wolverhampton, much respected official, and all in Norris on the far side there with the white trunks, arguably the best cruiserweight around in the world. Although Alfred Cole, the IBF champion, might have something to say about that. Nate Miller, Mr. Miller, in the blue trunks from Philadelphia. Much the taller man, 12 rounds. The WBA Cruiserweight Championship on the line here. How do you see it, Glenn? I think on pivot, it's a very good fight. I think you've got to go for, for Norris a little bit more because he's, he's obviously had the more experience and beaten him with the bigger men. But on a couple of fights recently, he's, he's struggled a little bit. Fights have been a little bit controversial with Norris. So, so you just wonder if he's slipping a little bit or is he struggling with weird, although it doesn't suggest it as he came in quite late. Well, that's right. In his only defense this year against Adolfo Washington, it was a very close call for Norris, who won by just one point on all three scorecards. And there were one or two people who booed that. So might he be ready to be taken here? by Nate Miller. Break. Break it on. Step back. Always dangerous with the fast left hooks all in Norris. Break. Step back. Norris very short, very stocky. So you, you see how well he must have boxed to beat some of the big heavyweights that he did. He was a younger man then, of course, and he, I remember seeing him boxing as a heavyweight. He looked fast at the weight. <laughs> Norris fights out of the KO Corral camp, beautifully named, run by Joe Sayetovich near San Diego in California. Like Miller, he's been a professional for nine years. Well, 
Well, it's a busy enough start from the challenger. Yes, he's trying to get his punches off, but so far Norris has got a he's got a good high guard and he's managing to tuck him, and it's just getting a little bit messy as they they, they try to to hold inside, looking for openings. Norris certainly won't want to leave the cruiserweight division coming off a defeat he'll want to hold on to his title and go into the uh, heavyweight division as the unbeaten wba cruiserweight champion and then go on to try to maybe win some big paydays in the heavyweight division against some of the names if everything works to plan miller out reaching him as you'd expect messy opening round Maybe Miller won it, I think. Yeah. Welcome back to the London Ar Arena. Huge crowd here building up, looking to see Nigel Benn defend okay. his world championship for the eighth time against the Italian Vincenzo Nardiello. That will come up right after this world championship fight, the WBA cruiserweight title fight with the champion all in Norris in the white trunks defending against Philadelphia's Nate Miller. Miller made a good workmanlike start. Yes, I would have given him the first round. Just did a, as you say, a little bit more work. Went out to try and get through with punches. When Norris is just tucking up a little bit, he's not getting off with his own. Good left hook. That was the best punch that Norris has thrown so far. Really found the timing for that. As an amateur, by the way, when they were both uh, teenagers, all in Norris beat Mike Tyson. Well, he's got some pedigree behind him. He certainly has, and also he beat Ned Miller in one of them amateur fights as well. Yes, that's right. They met nine years ago. I think it was a Golden Gloves quarterfinal. And Norris came out on top. So Miller, if he's got a long memory, will be looking for revenge for Stop that, among other things here. I want tidier work, referee John Coyle telling them. He said this is supposed to be a world championship. Yes, it's all just a, a little bit messy, but I think that's because there's a world title fight. Obviously, both men want to win desperately, and they're just getting a little bit anxious, and they're grabbing a little bit. A lot of holding on inside. They don't seem to have taken too much notice of what John Coyle had to say to them. Halfway through round two. That left hook looks to be the danger punch from Norris. He's found the target with it a couple of times in this second round. But isn't getting, he isn't getting his punches off as he uh, used to when he was a, a younger man against the heavyweight he, he certainly was a lot faster getting his punches off it just seems to be weird maybe i think he's he's trying to load up for that left hook, trying to get a lot of power in it body shot maybe just straight a little bit low from norris and he nodded to acknowledge the fact like an old pro <laughs> yeah, yeah. norris is looking for that body shot but just walking into a couple of left jabs from Miller, and i think that will be the the strategy that he will want to adopt, use the jab, and build up points with that. Then he gets a bit untidy and close. Norris has done slightly better in this round than he did in the first, but that isn't saying a lot, really. Well, neither man, neither man is looking exceptionally sharp in, the, in this fight so far. Well, 47 fights behind him. This is the 48th, and as an amateur and pro, he's had over 300 all in Norris. He's been boxing since he was 11 years old down in the gym at Lubbock, Texas. He claims his amateur record was 251 wins against 10 defeats. 
And some really big names among those wins, as I was saying, Ronaldo Snipes, Jesse Ferguson, Greg Page, Oliver McCall, the current WBC champion. And he's beaten the Olympian Anthony Hembrick as a cruiserweight, quite apart from his uh, world title defences, of which this is number five. He's held this title for over two and a half years. Calls himself the Juice. All in the Juice, Norris. They always have to have nicknames in America. Don't ask me what it means. <laughs> I think when a man has been as active as that in the sport as much, you sometimes got to wonder as he's getting on, you know, almost a 30, how much fight's left in him? Because that's an awful lot of fights. That's right. Is he coming towards the end? Round three, Norris in the white trunks here. And, uh, Miller ahead. So far, on Glen McCrory's scorecard. Early days. Yes, early days. And you see that uh, Norris is just starting to wind that, that left hook up a little bit more. Good right uppercut from him. Norris coming back. Better action at the start of round three. Miller himself was an American international as an amateur. And interestingly, at the weigh-in, he was very keen to see exactly what Norris's weight was. I wonder if he was thinking that maybe Norris is a bit tight at cruiserweight these days. As it was, he made it by one and a quarter pounds. But um, I don't know whether they've got some advanced intelligence there. Yes, well, there has been a suggestion that Norris wants to move up to heavyweight, so maybe they think he's, he's starting to struggle at this, at this weight. Miller's got a good knockout percentages. He's finished 21 of his 25 victims inside schedule, but a lot of those were really second and third raters, if I'm honest with you. That's right, although he does hold wins over Bert Cooper and Tyrone Booz, a few of the, the most notable names on his record. Yes, Tyrone Booz was the guy who beat Derek Angle in a World Cruiserweight title fight in Britain. You need the fight again not for many clean shots. Yes, it's relentless infighting at the moment, really, isn't it? Attritional. Good right across come hook from Norris. better from Norris he's starting to try and get a few combinations off although it's not very clean workmanlike is how you describe Miller so far he's got the face of a poker player at the London Arena tonight. Nigel Ben coming up, defending his world title against Vincenzo Nardiello. Let's have a look at the challenger here, Nate Miller. There he is, 31 years of age from Germantown in Philadelphia. Four defeats on his record. One of them to the African Sariki Sanogo early on. He was floored and outpointed by James Waring in a North American Boxing Federation title defense. And he's lost a couple of times to the excellent Alfred Cole, who Glenn knows pretty well that was your last fight Glenn and very honorably you performed trying to regain your old cruiserweight world championship thank you for that Ian. <laughs> you can give me the fiver later thank you still alive in the boot now both men just landing a, a couple of decent shots so hopefully they're starting to warm up because it's been a bit a bit workman late for the first few rounds Norris just looking to step it up a little bit as he needed to. 
getting in with some good looking body punches as they work close in the champion from San Diego just waiting really aren't we Glenn for one of these two to really take the initiative in this that's right at the moment the both just looking for openings and you, you kind of get the feeling that Norris can can start working with the body and bring his shots you know he seems to to have the, the, the better things inside him but he's not bringing it out he's just allowing Miller just to mess him about a little bit it's a good right hand as well didn't travel far from Norris clubbed into the side of the head of Miller I think Norris and his cornermen have probably decided he needs to start doing a wee bit more. Otherwise, he could be heading again for another close call. Yes, I think he had one uh, a little while ago with Arthur Williams, which he struggled a little bit in, but then came back in a, in a rematch and stopped him in good style. And I think, you know, maybe that's what happens. He's starting to, his performances are just starting to slip a bit. He's finding it harder to lift himself. Because when you've had such a long career and you've been in with men like Page and Snipes and Tubbs and Tucker, it must be hard years later to, you know, to still be in title fights. So it, it's going to be difficult for him to lift himself to accomplish the same sort of performances. This is Norris's best round yet. The fourth. Landed more cleanly and more often. One of the problems the cruiserweights have is that it's the one below heavyweight, and it sometimes tends to lack a little bit of charisma and marquee value. As the bell goes to end the fourth round now, backstage waiting to make his entrance at the London Arena tonight. There he is, Nigel Benn. They build this as the Warrior returns. He's been training in Tenerife for five weeks for this fight, and I went out to see him there, and I can tell you that he is in absolutely superb condition for this fight. Back five months after that savage and near tragic battle with Gerald McClellan. And he's getting himself warmed up nice and early, so that suggests maybe he's going to get himself in a good sweat and start this fight fast. Tickets have been selling well at the London Arena. Ben, no doubt about it, one of the most exciting fighters that Britain has ever produced. Fifth round in this WBA Cruiserweight Championship fight. In the white trunks, the champion all in Norris making his fifth defense. Nate Miller, his second attempt to become a world champion. That's the way Glenn McCory is saying it so far in favor of Norris. Yes, I have him just the just the busier fight as you see there he's he's starting to move around a little bit more you feel he's just starting to to warm up a little bit because normally he's a quite a fast puncher but the first couple of rounds he didn't do a lot but now he's just starting to do a a bit more to stop all in Norris in nearly 50 fights is Bert Cooper in eight rounds but Norris really that night had a very good excuse he injured his knee ligaments he could hardly walk so you really can't count that either <laughs> starting to let them go now a bit Glenn. yes that was better he doubled the jab on just through that it looked like he was gonna be right hook but he turned it into an uppercut and it was it just grazed past the chin of, of Miller What are your impressions of Miller so far? He started the fight very relaxed, and to be honest, he's carried on that way throughout. You just feel that he wants, he needs to pick it up. You know, he needs a he needs a good talk and do in the corner. Looks a bit one-paced, doesn't he? 
very much so. He's just plodding forward and throwing his shots one pace. And if he wants to win a title, he's having a, his big shot here. He's got to show a little bit more devil than this. Well, at this stage, the feeling that Norris is just slowly taking control of this. He's lifted his performance a little in the last couple of rounds. Miller, right. frankly, hasn't. Yes, for a small man, he's very short, very stocky. He's, he's doing it with the jab. He's got you know, quite a, a fast jab, and he doubles it up. But you see Miller, he's, he's the one who's looking to hold and spoil. And this Norris is the one trying to fight, trying to you know, work his arms and get some clean punches off. Well, Norris's fight so far, but the London Arena crowd not uh, at their most excited, frankly. Welcome back to the London Arena. Where in the corner of Nate Miller in this WBA Cruiserweight Championship fight, they've been getting pretty excited between the rounds. They've been slapping him about, trying to urge him to greater effort. Yes, not without good reason. He's got a world title fight here, and he's not he's not performing at his best. He's a very lackluster performance. I was just listening to what they were saying there, Glenn, in the corner. They were saying to Miller, "Come on, he ain't nothing." It's always a good lane to say when, <laughs> when you're not in there. But anyhow, whatever they said, it's starting to work. It's he's worked. He's yeah. finally starting to throw punches. Some urgency from Miller. That's shaking him out of his lethargy. <laughs> and that's Miller's answer to the corner men, Gene Pearson, Smiley Haywood and Stan Williams. Can he sustain it? Yes, that's the thing. It was a, a short 15-second burst, but then he's he stopped working again. And so far, Miller hasn't fought like a man, really, for whom this is almost certainly his last opportunity to become a world champion. So it's a sort of now or never situation for him. A cliche, but true. Very much so. It's a big opportunity, and you, you'd think when, you, when he's given a chance, you know, he'd really take it. But um, so far, he hasn't done so. And again, Norris is the one who's looking to be thrown punches. an extremely strong cruiserweight if he was able to go the distance with all those big quality heavyweights getting through a couple of decent looking headshots too that's right although I, I had seen Norris in the past and for a little man he, he was pretty much he used to have a boxing style where he'd move around the ring and throw fast combinations and really outwork them the big heavyweights Shouting at Miller from the corner again. Work. Last quarter of a minute of round six as we move towards the halfway point in this one. Yes, and st still it's a, a levered performance from Miller. He just can't pick it up. He just can't put some pressure on. There's no doubt about it, though. This all in Norris is... Uh, is a tough man to beat and that his record underlines that point his only defeats one of them in his third fight against Erling Alexander the Bert Cooper defeat when he was injured and Tony Tucker who fought Lennox Lewis you might remember 
in a world title fight and lost and gave uh, Mike Tyson, a peak Mike Tyson, a pretty good run. He, he only beat him on a split points decision. That's right, so that shows you the, the sort of form and quality of this fighter. A little bit of the work, most of which has been in close, but this is where Miller decided to, to be brave and have a go, but it just lasted for a very short time. And you see Norris start to fight back, and then he was the one who carried on for the rest of the round throwing punches. Seventh round, Miller rather slow to get off his stool. Busier, able to sustain the rally for longer. Yes, he's the one throwing the punches, but he isn't. In, he isn't getting any significant punches in. You know, he's working the arms and he's he's landing, but he's not really planting his feet and looking for any sort of solid punches. Real fighting family, the Norris's. Uh, his dad, all in Norris, senior in the corner. And of course, brother Terry, who bids to regain his light middleweight world championship pretty soon in a third fight with Luis Santana. Norris has been disqualified in the first two. Almost unbelievably, but he has. <laughs> That's a good right. Yes, better for Norris. But better for Miller, wasn't it? Yes, the stand alive, no, but the couple of these main hands from Miller. This is more like it from the challenger. Starting to show a bit more desire, hunger, ambition, Nate Miller, and needed to, too. And I think really things were beginning to slip away from him. They still are. To, to get in close and he's the one who presses forward but he, he's the one who does nothing when he's in close he walks into Norris and then doesn't throw any punches body shot and then a clubbing right from Miller and another right cross this is about the best he's done for a while Nate Miller and again probably the most positive round we've seen from the challenger You should get the feeling that Miller can do a lot better, but isn't doing it. I think maybe the corner, that's why they're, they're shouting so hard. Maybe they, they feel that as well. Caught him with the right uppercut as well. It's an almost languid way of throwing his punches. Almost as if they're an afterthought, Miller. Ooh. Left hook inside from Norris. That's a good shot as well, but maybe Miller did enough to take that one round. What did you think, Glenn? Yeah, I thought um, Miller was the busier. He just livened himself up a, a little bit, and I think that was enough to, to, to win the fight. But it, and when he does it, he, he threw a couple of right hands at Norris, and they look that they hurt Norris a little bit. But then he's he's too keen on just standing still. There's some of the work there. Good right uppercut. And Miller was pushing Norris back, but then he so frequently just wants to stand in close and do nothing. There's the two right hands in close. Well, they just seem to have Norris staggering for a second. Come on. You understand? Go to work. Keep the hand moving. Keep the hand moving. A little bit later, again, some more Miller work. Just enough to, to win this round where he just starts opening up and lands with punches. Second jump. Round eight. Eighth round. Champion all in Norris in the white trunks. And here's Glenn McCrory's scorecard for you. He's got Norris two points clear, two rounds ahead. Again, this is better work from Miller as he started this round. 
maybe it was part of Miller's game plan to come on strong in the second half of the fight. He certainly picked it up a, a bit. Oh, now that was a punch thrown after the referee had said break. Norris is less than amused, as you might expect. Now, some fighters might have sought to make rather more of that than all in Norris did. Yes, well, I think he's, he's been around for a long time, and he, you know, he knows the score, and he took it. It was a professional one. He, he didn't make a great deal of it. Straight right from Miller was a good shot, and it's got Norris holding on for a moment. Banged one right through the middle, and all in Norris wanted to hold on. This is a good phase in the fight, this, for Nate Miller, the challenger. The mood has changed a little bit. Yes, he's starting to pick it up, and he's getting a little bit more aggressive inside. He's looking to try and, try and punch with his free hands, where before he was looking to try and hold. Norris starting to be buffeted about in here, and he's in trouble here. The champion holding on. Is Norris about to go here? He's all over the place and he's down. And might he be out as well? The count's at five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's not going to beat it. It's over. All in Norris is dethroned. And Nate Miller, at the age of 31, becomes a world champion at last. And they're going absolutely potty. Look at that. I can't believe it. I don't suppose he minds too much. He's been in a pretty grueling battle. All in Norris is still prostrate on the canvas, being attended to by the doctor. Miller is prostrate on the canvas for totally different reasons. Well, you wonder where on earth Miller brought that from because he, he just came out all of a sudden. He got a little bit more aggressive inside, started to land with some punches, and then Norris just couldn't take it anymore. I think the punch that started it all was a straight right through the middle. And then he just piled the punches in, and Norris, suddenly the fight just wasn't in him anymore. But Miller just totally couldn't believe it. He walked away when Norris went on the floor, and he spat out his gumption, and then he just saw his eyes open. He, was, he just couldn't believe he'd done it. And he just did the finish there. He just starts hooking him around the side there, and that good left hook there, that did some damage. Norris tries to fight back. He just sensed the legs were gone, then he's looking to try and hold. And Miller just keeps hitting him. Then another good left hook. The legs just collapse. And Norris is still... Well, he's just being dragged to his feet. This is quite a bad way. All in Norris cannot stand up. Hey, Dom, you got to get to him, Mr. King. 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 That's the knockdown. Now, all in Norris has collapsed back on the canvas on the far side. Now, those are quite disturbing scenes at the London Arena. They've tried to pick him up once, and they couldn't do it. And now, well, they'll keep him there for as long as possible. Now, these are distressing scenes. Um, well, you hope that they will be able to bring him round here quite quickly but they tried to drag him to his feet and he sank back down again and Miller now is starting to look a bit concerned himself about that they've stopped their whooping of joy and uh, we do have a problem in the same London arena ring where we had the awful scenes after the Nigel Ben Gerald McClellan fight we hope and pray that this is no sequel to that Let's hope they just give everybody gets enough room. The medical teams, nobody should be any, anywhere near that other than the doctors now. That's right. You see, he's moving his his hand about, so I think he's he's maybe talking to somebody there. John Morris, the secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, looking on rather anxiously of course the safety measures have been improved dramatically in recent years there is John Morris
so that uh, we do have good medical backup on hand. There are ambulances as well on standby. Now then, uh, Barry McGuigan watching these scenes as well with us, and uh, Barry, a bit distressing. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. I can remember the night uh, of the McClelland uh, Ben fight very distinctly, and, and, and this is what sort of happened afterwards. Slowly, they, they, they got a little bit more concerned as, as the time went on. Now, the anaesthetist is there. He's taken over from the British Boxing Board of Control doctor, and uh, they're getting the, the, uh, the stretcher ready. It seems like uh, Norris is, is, is compass mentis. He's just tired and exhausted, and uh, uh, they're just making sure. They've already put the oxygen mask over his mouth, and they're just making sure that he's, uh, he's got uh, plenty of air. There's the anaesthetist there uh, with the gray hair. You see him shaking his head just now. But uh, they've got the oxygen mask over, and they're just making sure that he's OK. But uh, uh, they won't let him leave the ring until they're totally satisfied that, that uh, he's, uh, he's breathing, and uh, unless there's an emergency. Well, he is going to be taken to hospital. John Morris, if you can see him in the centre of the ring, is I, I think, got a mobile phone and is uh, ringing the hospital now. So one would hope that this is a case of exhaustion and not much more than that. And we are endeavouring to find out. And this is exactly what we did not want to see in a British ring again. And they've just asked for the uh, lights to be put down as well in here because I think it's, um, they're bearing down on the ring and they're making it very, very hot in there, not only for all in Norris, but for the medical teams trying to tend to him. He's getting oxygen administered and he will be taken to hospital and his condition carefully monitored, obviously, but um, well, we can only hope that it is not too serious. That's right, it's always very distressing when, th when this happens. And also, we don't know what's going on. I mean, he could be, he could be fine there, but there's always that, that definite worry that falls now well. And even uh, Nate Miller, who has won a world championship here, is now walking around the ring looking rather alarmed. the 29 year old American who has lost his world championship here tonight a championship he'd held for two and a half years but really all that pales into insignificance alongside his health and his welfare and really another reminder to us all that that is really a prime concern in this business Norris being taken out of the ring and he will be taken to hospital. I've just been told that all in Norris is conscious. Now that is good news. He has not lost consciousness. But we await to hear really the extent of his injuries. But there's no denying it. That is an extremely alarming and worrying sight and we shall endeavor to bring you news of all in Norris's condition very soon um, of course I, I'm not at all certain whether Nigel Ben backstage is aware of what is happening here but how awful really how strange that this should happen again just as he's about to re-enter the ring Yes, well, we said he had it thought of it before, and I'm, I'm sure they'll try not to, to let him know this, but obviously this is when, when he could then again think of what happened last time. And this is when his, you know, his concentration could be put off and he could, he could you know, recall the disturbing things that happened in his last fight. 
OK, let's go back to uh, Paul Dempsey with our hopes and prayers, all with a very speedy recovery for all in Norris. Yes, thanks very much to Glenn and to Ian at ringside. And the scene, as you can see around the London Arena, has taken a rather sombre turn. The thoughts of everybody in the arena, the thousands of people here, are just wishing the very best in this situation for Norris. And the dreadful thought, of course, occurs that we could be witnessing something like the uh, dreadful situation that Gerald McClellan faced in this same ring, what, five months ago. Barry McGuigan watching here with me. Now, the prognosis from ringside is that he is conscious in the first case. Yeah. He's, he is moving. Yes. Uh, how good are these signs? Just before, Barry, just before we come to you, I'm sorry, let's go yes. back down to ringside and talk to Ian again. Okay. Yes, I've just got a bit more news. I've just been speaking to some officials of the British Boxing Board of Control. Now, they tell me that it looks, and this is, of course, very unofficial, it looks as if all in Norris is okay he was talking while he was prostrate there and after he'd received the oxygen treatment and just to reiterate he was conscious when he was carried out of the ring so that is at least a hopeful sign back to you paul yeah we can do with all the hopeful signs we can find at junctures like this and i think it's in fairness barry we've all seen these things in the past it is too yeah. soon to make a firm statement as to what his condition could possibly be, certainly without medical expertise. Yes, indeed, but let's, uh, let's try to be a bit positive and, and let's try to be optimistic. He looks good. Um, he, he, the fact that he is, he's talking, it looks good, the fact that he's talking and he's responding and uh, he's having a conversation. So, but of course, it, it is very early stages, so let's hope he'll be OK and, um, you know, keeping our fingers crossed for him. And yet again, a potent reminder of the dangers that all boxers face and the higher you climb and the bigger the sacrifices the tougher it can be. Back down to ringside and we'll wrap up the formalities on that fight from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to recognize the victor in this bout with the time of two minutes, four seconds in round number eight. He's the winner by way of knockout and the new WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Nate, Mr. Miller. Nate Miller has a world title belt, but I'm sure it won't taste quite as good as he would have wished. And in situations like this, one of the people most affected, obviously, is the fellow fighter, the fellow competitor, who has been an unwitting partner in the dreadful events unfolding in the ring. And as our star attraction tonight, Nigel Benn, would be able to tell us better than anybody else, it can be the toughest hurdle of all to overcome. Next up, scheduled the ring, is Nigel Benn, defending his WBC World Super Middleweight crown against Vincenzo Nardiello. 